So let's go ahead and take a look at our winds and temperatures forecast, right? So winds and temps aloft, the FB forecast. We're going to go ahead and go to forecast, click on the winds and temps, and that brings us to this page here. Now, we can see it in graphical form, or we could scroll down here and click on an area of the United States to see it in textual form. So let's go over the graphics first, right? So first, there's a little key down here to help you determine what these little barbs are telling you. So we can see this little barb over PIE here. It's got five knots, and then a long barb means 10, so five plus 10 equals 15. So the wind is 15 knots, and it shows us the direction it's coming from, right? So it's showing us that it's blowing from east to west, so the wind is 090 at 15 knots at 9,000 feet is what this selector happens to be dialed into. So if we dial this up to, say, 39,000 feet, the winds are going to be very different. We can see they're actually fairly light at 39,000 feet today. They're out of the uh, east-southeast at about 10 knots over PIE. If we look a little further out to our west, we can see where we have some of these flags. Now, it's the same deal. It's just the flag stands for 50 knots, so they don't have to put so many barbs on here. So that's 50 knots, and it's coming from the north-northeast, blowing towards the south. So if you're coming from... Uh, from out in Kansas there, from Oklahoma, and you're flying south to Texas, you'd have a great tailwind today. We can see here, 55. So a little barb is 5, and then the flag is 50. Now, pay attention also to the valid time you've selected here. So if we want a forecast for a flight that's happening in the future, we want to go 12 hours out, we can drag our valid time, and of course, the weather's changing into the future. So make sure you're selecting the correct time frame that you want along with the right level that you're going to be flying at. And of course these little numbers here are the temperature in degrees Celsius. So at 9,000 feet it is 10 degrees Celsius in Cleveland today. It's August. It's fairly warm. So that makes a lot of sense. Where's the freezing level? Well not at 12,000 feet. It's above that. Still plus six. And then we'll go ahead and we'll see Oh, minus 7, minus 6 at 18,000 feet. So somewhere between 12 and 18,000 feet is the freezing level today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the textual form here. And we'll go ahead and click on the southeastern United States. Look at PIE, St. Petersburg. So we can take a look at PIE here. We see the wind is 090 at 7 knots. Here it's 090 at 14 knots. And if we looked a little bit further out here, we could see 050 at 8 knots at 30,000 feet. We also have the temperatures here, right? So plus 16 is positive 16 degrees, plus 11, plus 11 degrees. And then temperatures are all negative above 24,000. Anytime you get above 24,000 feet, it's not going to be above zero centigrade, above 32 Fahrenheit. So these are our winds and temps aloft. Now, how else is this useful besides just flight planning? Well, besides just flight planning, we could be looking at this and look outside the window and see a picture much like this today, where we have these puffy little clouds, we see some rain showers off in the distance, and say to ourselves, hmm, I wonder if these puffy little clouds are going to grow into thunderstorms. So this awesome little video of the area here was taken about 1 p.m. It's currently just past 3.30, and we can see, well, yeah, there's... 16 degrees centigrade at 6,000, and then it drops 5 degrees for 3,000 feet, and then the next 3,000 feet it drops 4 degrees, the next 6,000 feet it drops a whole 14 degrees, the next 6,000 feet it drops a full 11 degrees, and then the next 6,000 feet it drops a full 17 degrees. So it's getting substantially colder as you go up, and that lapse rate we see in the atmosphere is definitely conducive to forming thunderstorms, since we can already see just by looking out the window here, there's lots of moisture in the air, and there's even a little bit of rain falling right now. If we want to go ahead and confirm that, we could go over to observation and radar, and then see on the radar screen that, yes, in fact, there's some rain down in Florida, that rain we saw off to the southeast of our position where right about here on the map, and we could see some rain off to the east and southeast. If we wanted a little bit better resolution, a little bit more detail, we could go to the single site radar, click near we are right here near Tampa Bay, and then we could see the Tampa Bay radar, and yeah, we're standing right about here in Sarasota, we're looking to the east, and we can see that weather out there that was shown in the video. Remember, nothing shows up on radar until rain is actually falling, and then all this stuff around Tampa here, that's where the actual radar station is. So that's just a lot of ground clutter and false returns close to the actual radar site. This is actually very clear precipitation, plus we could see it out the window. Now, last thing I want to go over with you here, guys, is winds and temps for some higher elevations, all right? So if we head out to, say, uh, the Midwestern United States or West United States where the Rockies are, we're going to see a lot of things missing here. Well, that's because Denver is 
right around 6,000 feet. So obviously they can't forecast winds that are going to be underground. So it's simply the elevation that's changing this here. So winds are not going to be forecast when it's within 1,500 feet of a station's elevation because they just figure it's very similar to the winds at the surface. And they won't forecast temperatures when they're within 2,500 feet of the station. So we can see here, we get some temperature forecast at 6,000. Here we don't. It's because 6,000 feet is within 2,500 feet of the station. And then 9900 simply means the winds are less than 5 knots. If it's less than 5 knots, rather than writing calm, they just write 9900, no direction, no wind velocity. Now what about when we come down here and we see some crazy numbers, like we know this is 260 degrees at 83 knots, what about this, 77? We can't have 77 degrees or 770 degrees. So what is that? Well, we actually minus five from the first number. So anytime you see a number greater than 360 here, you're gonna minus five. So seven minus five is two. So we say that's 270 at 06, but it's not six knots, it's 106 knots. So we simply minus five from that really big number up front. And then we go ahead and say, okay, it's 270 at 106 knots. Here, it would be 260 at 102 knots. So the wind can be blown pretty hard when you get up high there to 39,000 feet.